Hey, Todd Schaefer, welcome. Railroad Earth is here back at E-Town. It's been a long time. I, and, think, uh, it, I think it probably has. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, and it's cool to hear new songs, and we're going to talk about that in a, in a sec. Um, I want to start out just a little bit about learning more about your, your uh, early days in uh, Stillwater, New Jersey, or wherever the heck you grew up. Is, it some, is that right? Uh, I lived close. in Stillwater for maybe 14 years, good yeah. long time, yeah. uh, around the time the uh, band <clears throat> got started. Yeah. And, and so when, when you're growing up, I'm just trying to imagine two things. One, uh, what were you listening to? What, was, what music turned you on? And two, uh, what kind of a vision did you have for, like, what would it be like if I were in a band? I want to know those two things. So what were you listening to when you were a youngster? <laughs> um, I grew up with, you know, round up the usual classic rock suspects. Um, you mentioned uh, the Grateful Dead, the Allman Brothers was yeah. huge uh, with my uh, my running gang. Yeah, we, did you, we, did we, you saw them, we saw them a lot. Oh, cool. But uh, as far as in the bluegrass world, I, I, I was a huge uh, David Bromberg fan, went yeah. to see him. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, John Hartford, I loved. As a kid, I loved the uh, the humor, the funny stuff with Bromberg and Hartford. And, right. Uh, so that drew me in as a as a youngster. But if you'd been younger, it probably would have been Weird Al Yankovic. Or something. <laughs> Weird Al Bromberg. Yeah. <laughs> Weird Weird Dave Bromberg. Weird Dave Bromberg. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, he he was close to the edge. He was a great entertainer. Oh, um, incredible! And still he still is. is. Yeah. Still is. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then when you're a teenager and you're putting bands together and you're thinking about these favorite musicians, did you, um, did you imagine growing up to be David Bromberg or did you imagine being like, uh, like, a, like a band that would be on TV or anything like that? Did you have any sort of vision of what it would be like? Um, we, we didn't think that far ahead. We were, we were, we were kind of a, uh, a center of uh, a social scene. And yeah. there was... You're going to be shocked to hear it, but a little partying going on. Oh. And, uh, you know, the, the, the whole town would come, and yeah. we, we had notorious uh, scenes going on. Yeah. We actually used to play. There was a guy. <clears throat> his name is Tom Tierney, and uh, he's passed since, but uh, he, he kind of broke all the laws. Uh, and we used to do a thing called the Beer Bash every Sunday. And uh, we were 16. The, people, the kids coming to see us were 16. <laughs> uh, and you just had to get a fake ID and come in and pay $5. And it was us playing all night long. The old Crow Band, before there was the, uh, the new old Crow Band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'd, we'd play all night. And it was $5 for all you could drink. And imagine what that scene that created so wow so you so you had basically achieved everything a young musician could ever dream of at the age of 16 which is we had a hell of a, good a time. great Let party you. yeah you don't need to be on a bus you don't need to do anything that was it the pinnacle of your career right there yeah i you know i wondered because um no know, pizza though you could you could have had pizza <laughs> you totally could have had pizza um the, the, the thing is, and I was talking about this earlier, just the transition from the idea and the discipline of starting a band or playing and then getting better and touring. I know that we both traveled in our uh, early days of our bands in these, bo in, we both had the same really terrible old Greyhound buses, the old GMC <laughs> 4104 that we drove around in in the early days of Hot Rise. And I know with uh, From Good Homes, that was, your, that was your ride for a while, right? Well, yeah, and the... the um the most epic fail in the bus department came with, with Railroad Earth's first bus, which, which Andy actually found this one. And uh, I think we used it, actually, our first trip out, to, um, out here to Colorado. Uh, it died in the mountains somewhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we, we had the bus for maybe half a year at the most. But we paid for the bus for 10 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There were definitely years when the bus made more than anybody in the band. 
Anyway, the, but the, but the uh, and, and we fast forward to now, and I just, you know, congratulations to you guys for really building such a cool scene, selling lots, lots of tickets. You have two festivals that you host. Um, tell me about those. Hangtown and what's the, what are they called? It's Hillberry, yeah. Hillberry. Down, down in Arkansas, yeah. in the Ozarks. It's, yeah. it's wonderful, yeah. And then, and so you're the, you're the house band, and so you get to invite guests that you want, and you, your fans come and they hang out for the weekend, and, and it's a beautiful, it's kind of a variation on your 16-year-old all-you-could-drink beer thing, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, I guess you could say that. <laughs> no, it's, um, uh, they're really, uh, they're wonderful yeah. events with, uh, with, a, with a great great spirit to them yeah and we're hey, we're proud of them they've 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 lasted and the yeah. people enjoy them quite a bit and it takes a lot of work to make them make them really yeah, it sure to does pull it off yeah we were both part of an event uh yesterday that was a kind of a festival um there were 18 different artists on stage and in, in an indoor arena to raise funds for our late friend jeff austin who died earlier i guess in june of this year um but it was really interesting just thinking about the, your own festivals and your fans and your connection as a songwriter to the community you've created, that the music has created this community. And um, it was in evidence yesterday. It was unreal. I, I, it's, you know, that will, uh, that's, that's one night that I think all, everyone involved with will always remember and cherish. It was, it was pretty special. <laughs> yeah, and and it was uh, it was for a good cause. It was raising money for uh, Jeff Austin's widow and his his three kids uh, that he left behind. And um, you guys have uh, recently also suffered a loss of your long term bandmate, you know, Andy Gessling, who's about a year ago, a little more than a year ago, he died. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and we lost our uh, founding guitar player in Hot Rise, Charles Sautel, much too young also. And it really changes. There is this, this DNA, this, uh, this kind of chemistry that happens when you uh, have the life experience of being in a band. And you have that kind of bonding, the ups and downs and all that stuff. And it, it's, it's, really, um, it's, it's really a, a whole different thing when, somebody, when you lose somebody who's one of those integral parts of the band, right? Yeah, integral... Um obviously to the um to the sound of the music you create especially someone like andy who had such a, a huge talent and breadth of abilities and was such a big part of the sound yeah but also uh you you lose you know a brother you lose part of the the spirit of uh of what makes makes the magic happen yeah you know and uh <clears throat> uh, speaking of, uh, you know, uh, concerts when you're 16 and playing music with with your youngest friends, you know, Timmy, Timmy and Andy played music together from from about that time. Yeah. So they'd been playing in all kinds of other formations as well. So yeah. it went more than it was more than just um, Railroad Earth. You know, it was yeah, their their brother. Well, Their it's, brotherhood. It's uh, it's rare when you can have a, a musical relationship that lasts that long. Yeah. And it's really unsettling when you lose that connection. But at the same time, you can't recreate it, so you have to forge on because we're bound and determined to play music, and we will, and you will. Yeah, and um, it's it's been kind of remarkable, amazing things yeah. have happened uh, as we, you know, take the step to continue and yeah keep things going. We got by with, uh, as they say, a little help of our friends. We had a bunch of folks from that music community that was there last night step in and um, fill in for Andy at times. And we played concerts and kept the music going. Our fans were unbelievable yeah. in their support and staying with us. And, and we've been incredibly fortunate to uh, and and moving forward find other other players there's there's one sitting there right now who's, yeah. been, who's with us now mike robinson, mike robinson yeah. <clears throat> what an amazing thing it's been to uh, get yeah. to meet him and find him and yeah you know you take the step and you keep going and, yeah and things happen you know in case you just tuned in you're listening to e-town 
And uh, I'm here with Todd Schaefer from Railroad Earth. Uh, new record. And yes. uh, Anders Osborne at, uh, at the helm, having you, helping you shape this thing. You did some tracking down in New Orleans. It looks like horns and strings and yeah. new songs and yeah. a, new di- a new direction. Yeah. <laughs> Fun, well, it was, right? It was a departure. You know, we wanted to um, do something, you know, different, a little bit outside of the, the normal comfort zone. And, yeah. and um, also, it was a, what you, what you might call a, you know, a destination recording. We went... We went away and we went down to New Orleans and part of that process was us, the five of us, um, after losing Andy, <clears throat> just getting together in a bonding kind of way and mm-hmm. uh, away from all distractions. Yeah. We, we've normally, and, and the normal uh, MO and, and routine would be do something as close to home as possible because we're gone so much, you know. Right. So let's... Uh, let's make a record but let's not go away right so but this time we wanted to get our the five of us in one place and and get that uh, connection yeah and you'd worked with anders before and he's he's a great new orleans resource for everything yeah anders was unreal yeah what, what a character yeah and <laughs> we had a blast yeah it was it was it was a good experience really and, was. and quickly before we get back to music i know um so one of the new songs your new single is called great divide yeah. um so in the last few years, do you find yourself as a songwriter feeling like, man, I have to... Because there is there's a positive thread running through a lot of your songs, and there is this community feeling, and you want to bring people together. So do you feel the urge to, to um, sort of acknowledge the, the challenge or the divisions that are out there in the world and try to address them as a songwriter, or, or does that just come naturally when it comes? Um, it, for me... Uh, the, the, it either comes naturally or it doesn't come. You know, I don't keep a journal or write a, an idea like, oh, I want to write a song called The Great Divide. You know, I, I, I just pick up my guitar and uh, I play and uh, sing. And uh, the imagery and the thoughts uh, flow in that sort of routine, you know. Um, and I find, you know, then, then, then I kind of make sense of, uh, it, of what's happening, yeah. and, you know. Kind of like it did when you were 16. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you know, it's funny. I, I had a, um, and, you know, I, I have been writing songs uh, probably since uh, earlier than that, you know, and still and recording them in the basement. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, listen, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I would say given that you don't need to, uh, don't need to change your saying too much. So persevere, <laughs> keep on going. Congratulations again on your success. And we're going to get back to music. Um, thanks, Todd. Good to hang out with you again. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. And welcome back. Railroad Earth. <laughs> Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks.